Welcome back to the A's Your Team Story Cup Season 3. This is week number one for both of these teams. It's Complexity, Dignitas, the alliance between those two teams versus Yoey Flash Wolves. It's currently 2-1 in the favor of Yoey Flash Wolves as Haas had quite a good run. But the man to dethrone him and start turning this around is going to be Spawning Blue in the top left corner of the map, Dignitas Teffel. And his opponent to the upper right playing for Yoey Flash Wolves, the Red Zerg player. It's gonna be Ian. Now again, I kind of like off the top of my head. It's like Ian. It's Son. I mean, these are the guys you know. These are the ones you've seen before in the past. These are the Yoey Flash Wolves members that are best represented here. And I don't know. Again, it, it, it doesn't matter whether you're Chinese, European, Korean, North American. Teffel's a really hard player to deal with. He plays in a very how do I phrase this? Like, like you look at Bly, he's a vicious player. You look at someone like Snoot, he plays a, he plays a very specific way as well. You know, gasless a lot of the time too, or used to once upon a time versus Zerg versus Zerg. Teffel's unpredictable. He's volatile in that regard. It's really hard to tell what he's going to do. And while Roach Hydra might be his comfort zone, that doesn't guarantee that he's going to skip past the Zerglings, the Speedlings, and the Banlings in the early phase of the game. So, Ian, I don't know what he's expecting off of this. I also have no idea where the Chinese guys practice. I know a lot of the times, like, you say, okay, these players, Happy and Teffel, have run into each other on the ladder several times in the past. And it's true, because they both play in Europe nine times out of ten. I've heard different things about different sort of latencies for the various servers for the Chinese and Taiwanese players. So, I'm not sure if Teffel and Ian have really clashed together in the past. But we'll see what ends up happening here. Teffel is going to be going for a pool first, whereas Ian's open with a hash reverse. In this regard... I would normally, you know, there's a lot of things you can nitpick, like, okay, one, one gets the queen out sooner, which means faster larva, which means faster creep spread, which means earlier defense, the other gets circlings out sooner, which means, you know, blah, 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 but, I mean, the reality is, pool versus hatchery doesn't make a big difference unless someone's looking to be really aggressive early on. If both of these guys are going to play that sort of, I, I don't know, no rush, 10 minutes, you know, NR10, max out speed fastest man possible no it's not anything like that but if they play that passive like no rush 10 minutes sort of style where no one's really attacking the other they just scout and wait to get roaches out it'll be a very passive very boring game but it'll be one that'll collide in a big sort of finale i a lot of people hate roach versus roach and i gotta be honest i'm kind of on that train roach versus roach is one of the most dull styles of game to watch in zvz but once the action starts it almost doesn't stop and that makes it worth it in the end but I don't know if they'll necessarily do that. This is a good map for Mutalisks. This is a good map to harass with Mutalisks, especially. But it kind of feels like even players who do go Mutalisks, unless your opponent also goes Mutalisks, you transition into Roaches anyways. So we'll see what ends up happening. My my favorite types of ZBZ, of course, are the ones that entail early game aggression. Teffel's the only one who's taking gas so far, so I don't know if Ian's necessarily going to do that. He may just play that gas style where you get a lot of queens out early. Big reference, big shout. If you guys miss it, it's up on our YouTube channel. Snoot versus Targa. For the Norwegian Star League Grand Finals was seriously the most entertaining, hands down, the funnest, the best, and the most entertaining ZVZ I've ever cast. And I can say, single-handedly, it revitalized my love for this matchup. Because for a long time, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh great, here comes another 18-minute game where roaches are coming out, no tunneling claws, you know. But, but uh, no, that that was a really good series, and it showed the many different ways Zerg vs. Zerg can be played out. So if you're not a fan of this type of game style, I would recommend checking those games out, because they may just change your mind. Uh, in the meantime, though, Ian is finally going to be taking his gases. Nothing super delayed. I like that he he always times us out around the 5 to 6 minute mark, which is kind of perfect. You can play gasless, but only for so long. If you play gasless and your opponent goes banelings, if your opponent goes roaches, you're not going to have a good time. But both players just join it up for the time being. Queen's coming out here to hunt one of the overlords of Teffel. He needs to start running it now or it's dead. Uh, this is a little bit bold, too, because if Teffel was going for something like a Zergling all-in attack early, uh, Lings would already be on top of these queens, and he would lose both of these for free. Well, not for free, but for a cost of a very few Lings, which would be a bit unfortunate if that happened, but that's not happening. Teffel instead opted to take the gold bases as third, in plain view of Ian as well, and he knows it. He saw that Overlord before he made it, so uh, very bold. <laughs> we'll call it that, sure. Oh. First blood. Okay, a couple of Zerglings out of Ian are going to go down. But as far as Teffel's concerned... Oh, actually, you know, I think the Overlord is first blood. My bad, guys. Let's <laughs> finish talking about the Overlord. We're looking at the other side of the map. Like total dummies. With the gold base being up early, though, if you can hold this, it doesn't matter what the matchup is. PvZ, ZVT, P TVP, TVT even. If you've got an earlier gold base, 
it immediately doesn't pay off. But after you've been mining from it for about a minute, hell, two minutes, you're suddenly going to have a whole base's worth of economy over your opponent. Not just because it's just two bases, which is what Ian's currently stuck on, but because you'll be able to afford to make 20 extra links to match with the roaches. When these guys are 17 roaches on 17 roaches, and Temple's able to mix in links, that's going to give them a very distinct advantage, as they'll soak hits and they'll deal a little bit of extra damage. In the early game too, Roach versus Roaches are nice, but the links can sometimes really make the difference, despite the fact that they are very weak and quite often kind of, I don't know, useless units. <laughs> But lots of links coming out of Ian, and he's got a small amount of roaches to back this up. I like the way he's playing this. I shouldn't say a small amount, a moderate amount, a good amount of roaches coming across the map with queens too. teffel has got to be careful. This is something that could end his life. He doesn't have a lot of roaches of his own, and more importantly than that, he's got no zerglings to deal with it either. This gold base, like I said, it was bold because it makes it a giant target. It's a giant bullseye that Ian's going to shoot for, and Teffel has to defend it. He's going to keep mining from the gold though, and his economy's looking fantastic off of this. But it doesn't have what it's going to take to defend. Roaches are bleeding out to the roaches. The zerglings are killing zerglings. There's not enough larva, not enough injects from Teffel. If he had a macro hatchery down, this could be different, but Lairtex doing absolutely nothing for him right now. Plus one weapons is on the way, and I think he was waiting for that before trying to force the fight. But realizing that he's going to lose this base is forced to fight. Queen's in the front line transfusing the roaches. This is so stupid to see, but it's so fantastic in execution as it'll keep Ian's roaches alive just that little bit extra longer that he needs. The queens are also adding just a little bit of extra DPS, but it's enough, because Teffel doesn't have his own queens. Still trading out pretty back and forth, though. Unit to unit count, though, 11 roaches to 12. But again, those queens, those transfuses, they're making Ian's roaches last infinitely longer than they should. And a flood of links sneaks past Teffel while this is going on. It gets into the natural base, they run to the main. Teffel has nothing to defend, the queen's not in the mineral lines. Oh my god, I think Ian just won this game. <laughs> yep, good game is going to be called. Teffel, ladies and gentlemen, will go down... It was a short-lived life, but a life worth living? I, I, I was going for some sort of cool quote there, but I fucked that up. Anyways, that's going to put Yoey Flashwolves back on the board. Or not back on the board, but back in the lead. Still in the lead. Extending their lead. I don't know what I'm talking about at this point. Three to one. <laughs> over complexity dignitas. I'm sorry.